Hello, my name is David Voiles, and I am a technical evangelist at Microsoft, and I want to show you some of my favorite Visual Studio extensions. Um, so these are just ones that I found along the way have really helped out uh, either with my productivity or learning how to be a better programmer. Um, so if you have some recommendations as well, I'd love to hear about them. I'd like to give them a try myself and take it from there. Um, but the first one I'd want to start with is code alignment. Now, code alignment, very, very simple, and it does uh, exactly what you think it would do. So I have a blog post um, where I illustrated how I use a lot of these, but I know that a lot of people find it easier to, um, to learn through videos from time to time, so I figured I'd walk you through step by step how I use some of these. So inside of Visual Studio, I have a JavaScript and HTML5 project running. So um, code alignment works perfectly fine on uh, HTML. So let me see if I can line this up. There's all my divs. I'm going to go up here to align by, and I can hit a number of the, uh, these items up here. They've already pre-created for me. So align by equals, double equals, uh, equals equals. So I can make some changes there, even by quotes. But instead, I'm going to say align by, and I can enter the character I'd like to use. So I might say type, right, because I want these to line up correctly. So hit type, hit OK, and there we go. All of my type strings line up perfectly fine. And you see, it just makes it much, much easier to read what is going on here. Even this with this href. So I'll copy, I'll highlight all of those, go up, align by, say href, and here we go. Those are lined up very smoothly too. So if I take a step back, it just it's much, much easier for me to read and visualize what's happening here. So inside some of my JavaScript, I can go in. And you see a lot of my functions here. Um, let me scoot down to something. Here we go. So I like to make it so in my variables, all of my equal signs align correctly. So if I bump some of these in, uh, random sizes, what it's going to do when I align by equal sign is it's going to take the one that's bumped over to the right the furthest and align everything to that. So I can hit align by equals, and there we go. Go down a little bit more, and you see even for um, uh, my JS doc where I align what my properties and my functions are, I just find it's much, much easier for me to read and visualize what's happening here. Um, but uh, for debugging in particular, I'm going to show you where it's very, very useful. So I'm going to go down a bit. Here we go. So um, here's a switch statement where I'm setting the values for a number of these rooms that I'm using here for a, a game I'm recreating called Night Trap. So if I go down, you can see how large this switch statement is. So let's explore, save one for bedroom, hall, driveway. So JavaScript can be a bit difficult to work with sometimes uh, because it's uh, loosely typed. So uh, there are plenty of opportunities for me to make a mistake and not catch it until later on when I'm actually executing some of this code. Um, so what I can do here is I can very easily line up all of this, make it very easy to read. So I know here's my current object, and I have all these properties on it, such as set cam, set cam a string, set current URL. And I'll realize very easily if I'm missing something here, or even if one of these uh, variables is in the wrong order. So again, um, align by, very, very simple to use. But I find working with the team, or especially on larger projects, it just makes it much, much easier to read and manage some of my projects. Uh, the next one I wanted to look at, uh, go down is ReSharper. So ReSharper is probably the biggest one of this bunch. And it's not limited to just uh, JavaScript. It's also very, very useful for C Sharp or C++. Uh, but in this particular project, I'm going to jump between uh, a JavaScript project as well as C Sharp. So ReSharper appears up here in the top. You can see I have, why is ReSharper C++ disabled? I haven't bought that extension. Um, ReSharper, I believe, retails for $100 right now. Um, but I find it's actually worth every single penny. I cannot recommend this thing enough for a number of features that I'll, I'll hop into in just a moment. So let's go down here. You can see uh, it says local variable n total missed is never used. Okay, so. Uh, that's one thing, but also duplicate declaration. So I have a variable called n total missed, and I also have a function called n total missed. So what I can do is I can just left click on this. You see, I have a little light bulb that appears on the left hand side here, and it will resolve some of my issues if I click on it. For example, normalized local variables, 
remove duplicating function under cursor. Let's see. I don't know what change that made there, so we'll go back. But I could say I uh, remove duplicating function. Still not sure what that one's doing. Hmm. But it's saying I have a duplicate regardless. <laughs> so let's just get rid of this. And now I can see, no problem. No more squiggly. Uh, additionally, it's saying that uh, return this dot missed. So suspicious use of this qualifier from inner function. So um, I could declare a variable for it for an out of scope, um, but really it's just saying, hey, you probably don't need this here, so why don't we just get rid of it? So I get rid of it, but in reality, I really do need this because I'm referring to this up here. Go down a bit more, and let's see what else we have. Here we go. Uh, it's saying there is no has own property check in a body for an in loop. So it's, uh, it calls enumeration of prototype properties, uh, if I add this, click on it, surround four in a body with has on property check. See, it's going to add some code for me right there. Make it much easier to read, but also less prone to errors. So I go down a bit more, and it's saying variable play sound effects is used in inner scope before it is declared. So what that's doing is saying, hey, you're trying to use this function, but you have not declared it yet. So above this somewhere, I need to have uh, maybe up here in this line or another line beneath it, I need to have that play sound effects. Um, in reality, I have it somewhere further down in my code, um, but normally that would be an issue. However, for this particular code, uh, I have a, an iffy, so immediately invoked function expression up here. So all of my code is getting executed as soon as this script gets loaded anyway, so that is perfectly fine. Um, so that's just some of the ways that uh, ReSharpers help me out here. Go down a bit more, see what else I can find. Um, again, code alignment really helping me out here too. Let's see what it's saying about result. Okay, uh, it's saying, hey, I'm returning a result, but it's possibly an unsigned or unassigned value. So I'm just kind of catching little errors along the way. Um, again, same thing with variable register room button. So I'm using it before I'm declaring it. So not a problem. Uh, but let's go see what it looks like on a C-sharp project. So here's one with an ASP.NET project. Up here, you see I have things like uh, system. And this system namespace, it's saying it's unnecessary. right? So I'm saying I need to make use of this. But ReSharp is saying, hey, uh, in this entire C-sharp file here, I have not seen you try to use this at all. So to prevent clutter and even pl cluttering up your IntelliSense, why don't we just get rid of it? So. I can click on, whoops, click on system, a little light bulb appears. I could say, sure, remove all of the unused directives. And now these white namespaces here, I am making use of somewhere down in my code. Even better, if I was to use something or take advantage of something that needed a namespace, say, uh, we'll get rid of, comment this out for now. You notice right away, uh, the authorize uh, decorator attribute it's saying, hey, uh, I know which namespace this belongs to. You can find this in system.webmvc authorized attribute. Um, so I can click on this, and it'll actually add that namespace for me. Perfect. Great when copying and pasting code or trying to figure out where um, these objects or, are coming from. So I click on that, and sure enough, it added a using system.webmvc namespace for me. Perfect. So again, very, very useful. Um, it has all kinds of uh, tips and tricks along the way um, to help optimize your code. Um, so after that's completed, let's go back into our next extension. Go down a bit more. Ah, JS Lint for Visual Studio. So everyone's favorite linter comes to Visual Studio. If you're not familiar with something like JS Hint or JS Lint, I'll give you the rundown. So JS Hint uh, with an H, so JS H-I-N-T, essentially is there to catch some of your mistakes or errors before you actually make them. So with something like C Sharp, which actually gets uh, compiled every time you go to build a project, um, at compilation, it'll throw warnings and errors for everything and prevent you from building because it needs to know the types as the project's being built. JavaScript, loosely typed, still gets compiled. That's exactly how something like the eval keyword works. Still gets compiled, but it won't actually stop you from building the code because of its dynamic nature. So 
What this will do is say, hey, um, maybe you didn't mean to write your code this certain way. Here is a, we'll say, um, cleaner or more coherent way of writing some of this code to prevent yourself from creating some of these issues. So it just kind of throws um, a warning. JS lint, however, will prevent you from actually building a project if need be. So it's um, a stricter JS hint. So uh, in the example I highlight here, I say, uh, so for example, if I have an if statement, say, um, or yeah, if conditional, if my number is, and I have two equal signs equal to one, I want to do something, uh, my number could either accept a, the double floating point value, which I have there, or it could accept a string because it could be coerced. Um, if I use three equal signs, however, I'm saying I only want to accept um, either the string value or the double value. So with something like um, JS lint, I can stop, oops, stop this project. On the right hand side here, I can go over, right click, and say run JS lint, or have some project settings. So I can say output warnings as either messages, which um, aren't very strict. I can have them as warnings, so it'll give me a little yellow warning down here, so you can actually see some of this. So give me a warning. Messages, nothing too bad. Warning saying, hey, you should probably take a look at this. Um, or I could have it go as an error. So um, what that does is it prevents me from really blowing my foot off and stepping on something bad here. So uh, maybe something such as what I labeled before, where I have two equal signs instead of three, I could say, whoa, whoa, whoa. if this code has two equal signs in any spot, do not build the project. Instead, I'm always going to need three. So in lint options, I could assume that this is in development, so it might be um, a little looser with what I'm doing. I could assume ES6, so maybe I'm using some sort of JavaScript 6 functions or functionality. Um, it'll let those things slide. Um, and I can also tolerate things like bitwise operators, eval, um, a for statement. I could tolerate this. Um, messy white space. This one's particularly useful for me because of the way I'm lining things up all the time. I could also accept global variables. Global variables generally not a good thing, but uh, they do have their, their uses from time to time. Um, I could even say, hey, I only want my maximum line length to be so far, or maximum number of warnings. So for example, if I listed 10 warnings here, and all of a sudden I had more than 10 warnings when building my code, um, it could say, whoa, you have too many warnings to even build this project. Take a look at some of these and then we'll come back. So I'll save this. I'm going to clear this out. I oh, can't even do that. And I'm just going to right click, run JS lint, and you're going to see I'm definitely going to have some issues here. So here we go. I have uh, 10,033 warnings. Uh, so JS lint, unexpected for, unexpected var, unexpected backslash before this. And I can click on this and it'll actually bring me to the line of code where this is happening. Um, so this actually isn't even in, uh, a folder or a file that I had created. So what you can also do is you can tell it, right click, and I could say, ignore folder. So this is someone else's code or a third party library that I'm taking advantage of. Um, so maybe I don't want to be held responsible for someone's coding practices. Maybe they don't align with what myself or my team is doing. So in that case, I can say, ignore that folder with that code, and we'll just be on with it. Um, finally, last thing I wanted to show you was Web Essentials 2015. Very, very useful for web developers. Uh, someone who spends most of his time in the web, um, I use this every single day. So what it allow you to do is create a real-time connection or communications between the browser of your choice and Visual Studio. So you can take advantage of our debugging tools. Um, so that includes things like, um, let's see here. Let's go back to JavaScript. And I'll say Google Chrome. Oops, I still have JS lint on. Oh, yep, so let me restart this. Open website. So I have an, uh, an issue in this particular set of code, uh, which says object reference not set to an instance, uh, which is something that continues to happen over and over for me. So. Uh, yeah, let's run this to Chrome. And here's another project. 
bump this over to the left, have Visual Studio here on the right. And what I want you to do is I can hit Control, and I'll make this little toolbar pop up right here. I have Design, Inspect, Save Changes, and Auto Sync. I also have Auto Hide. So what I want to do is I want to click on Design, and look what happens here. As soon as I click on Design, you see on the right-hand side in Visual Studio, it starts skipping around to the different parts of HTML. So as I hover over these objects, I can make changes or see this. Even better, I can click on something. So right next to this trap button, I'm going to click on that. The key selling point behind design is I can click on it, and I can make changes in real time. So I will say, I am making changes in real time. And in my HTML in Visual Studio, that's all being propagated in real time. See right here? I'm making changes in real time. Perfect for editing HTML. Um, also, I can make changes to the CSS. So I right click, inspect element. Right inside the browser itself, I can use the browser's debugging tools. And previously with style sheets, you can see all of my styles over here on the right-hand side and which ones are actually being used or computed. Um, Previously, what I would have to do is I would uh, tweak my CSS a little bit, right? I'd make changes over here. Maybe, maybe I don't want Helve Helvetica. Maybe I want a, a different font. Um, I would go right down the font that I want, see how it looks inside the browser, and think, OK, it looks perfect. I have my little notebook on the side, and I'd write down, OK, change font to whatever, whatever uh, in this file. Looks like bootstrap minified CSS on this file at this line um, for this particular class. Perfect. Then I go over to Visual Studio, make those changes. Kind of time consuming and really prone to errors. So with this, instead, I can make changes to my CSS inside of the browser of my choice. So I'm not just limited to Chrome or Edge. I can use whatever works best for me and my workflow. And have all of that saved inside of Visual Studio. So that's just one of the many, many selling points uh, behind um, Web Essentials. Um, so I implore you to go take a look at more of this, right? So we have uh, find unused CSS. Maybe you have CSS just bloating up everything here, making your project larger than it needs to be or more confusing. I can click unused CSS, find all of these, and it, what it's going to do is it's going to have, like, have you jump through a bunch of your pages, record which styles are being used, and say, well, these haven't come up at all, so maybe we can consider getting rid of them. So uh, again, I implore you to take a look at this. And you can find all of this on my site at davevoils.com. But more importantly, I would love to know what some of you are using. Uh, I'll follow up in the next couple of weeks with another blog post about other um, really useful extensions that I'm taking advantage of. I've heard a lot of great things about CodeMade, so that may be the next one that I dive into. Thanks for checking it out.